hi guys welcome to my channel so this is season two episode two of love life and relationships and we have a special guest today raheem how are you doing today I'm doing well and yourself? amazing as always Splendid. so raheem you know what we do at love life and relationship we have conversations where we just be kicking it talking about real experiences everything that we're going through so the first question for you is are you single married engaged complicated what's your status it's complicated <laughs> okay so as you know i'm single celibate and sober for a while now uh, since 2021 december 2021 so I'm not in a relationship. I'm not a relationship expert. I'm just a person that knows a little bit about relationships and, you know, want to talk about it. So why is your relationship complicated? It just is. What's complicated about it? Like, relationships should be simple. They should be simple. That's, that's the key word, should. Hmm. As we know. <laughs> Life is complicated. Life is complicated sometimes. So, I know you, you know me. Actually, am I allowed to say or no? Yeah, you're allowed to say. Okay, so um, I actually have children with you. My last two children are yours. Um, so, we've known each other for a long time. Since I was 17, probably. 17 or 18, right? Yeah, I was, yeah you were 18, I was 19. Okay, so you're a year older than me. We were in a long-term relationship. I was actually married to you. You and I have two sons together. Both of them are grown, so we have really no obligation to each other. Um, I consider us to have had um, probably the, the normal relationship that most people have. You have a lot of love. You have a lot of um, frustrations. You have a lot of great times. I had a lot of good times with you, actually. Um, a lot of bad times also so let's not get it fucked up a lot of people are going to ask this question like why do y'all still talk if your kids are grown because we still friends does your significant other like the fact that you're friends with me in, in all actuality i think i think that she would rather us be friends than enemies but she is still leery of the fact that when that we are friends and I don't know, it's, it's just something that me and you always had that was always different. Like you said, when it's good, it's good, and when it's bad, it's bad. But you know, that's life. You gotta well, take the good with the bad. Right, you definitely have to take the good with the bad. But if I had to answer that question, I would think no. I don't think she would actually like for us to be friends. Only because, can women and men really ever be just friends? I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. I would say, I had one relationship that I was friends with, but she wasn't. And she's okay with that? And I'm not talking about female friends that I, that I talk about. These are just friends, people that I know. People I can, people I can actually have a conversation with and, and laugh and joke, and, and that's all it is. Just us laughing and joking, having a good time. Just sometimes they bring their relationship problem to me because they want a, a male's point of view, and I can give them my unbiased opinion because I'm not trying to throw that man under the bus. I'm not. I'm not trying to break nothing up. I have. I have nothing to gain. Okay, well, when you and I were in a relationship, you know me, and my ne my man is not allowed to have any female friends. I'm sorry. But and you when male friends. not when you and I were dating, I didn't. You didn't? No, you I didn't. No, I didn't. It wasn't until like we started having a bunch of issues. Cause as long as you and I was together, I was with you 100% all the time. You never heard of me talking about or to another dude at all, period, until we started having major issues. And then I figured what was good for the goose is good for the gander. Understandable. So, understand. so initially in our relationship, you were very aware of the fact that there was not any dudes around because I was with you all the time. So 
yeah for you to even say that sounds crazy okay but anyway um but there was i can remember and i can recall you actually did have one person around that you considered a female friend which i was a little bit leery of that um i don't know if we should say her name but you do you know who i'm talking about uh anna Well, I just never trusted friendships between men and women. And sometimes it's not about me not trusting my man. It's about me not trusting the female. Anna's one of the dudes, yo, for real. Anna's a nigga. That's where she got the nickname Manna. Manna Smack Crow. <laughs> Anna's just another dude. She like another nigga, yo, for real. Well, I never trusted it. Anna was cool, but I never really trusted the men, women, like, type bod. Okay, so... Um, you and I dated off and on when we were younger first, before we had any kids. And then we kind of took a break, separated. You went your way, I went my way. And then um, we kind of rekindled a relationship when, I don't, do you remember how old we were at the time? Oh, 23, 24, something like that. Okay, so then that's when we really got into like the the real thick of, you know, relationship stuff. And initially i can say for myself i thought everything was cool i mean at least i mean there was a situation because you actually had a girlfriend when we started back talking right <laughs> yeah i did yeah i did and it wasn't like you lied to me about you having a girlfriend but you lied about the condition of the relationship did i lie about the condition well what, what I, exactly what exactly did i tell you Okay, so from what I can remember, and this was a long time ago, and it, a lot of things happened in between there, but I remember you actually saying that you was with somebody, and um, I don't recall if you ever told me that you lived with the person, um, because, and, and I do believe that you only told me that she existed because I require a lot of time. And so, although you was out hanging out, it was almost like you had to leave at a because you and me are from two different areas of the same place. So it would take probably about 45 minutes for you to get to me, but it was almost like you were kind of, um, I don't think you told me it was as serious as it was. That's what I can remember because I think that once the reason why I had an issue was because it was sounding like the sex and everything had stopped. And then all of a sudden somebody ended up pregnant and I'm trying to figure out how's their pregnancy when there's no sex. It wasn't anything. I was I was actually on the outs when um, everything was good until I found out she was pregnant. I believe, yeah, I, actually, when we first started back fooling around, she wasn't pregnant, but it was kind of. I don't know. You, you were a whole lot more fun than she was. <laughs> Period. Point blank. <laughs> I, 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 I enjoyed spending more time with you than I did with her. I mean, me and you had a lot of sex. Yeah, we had a lot of sex, and we 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 had a, we just had a lot of fun. We definitely had a lot of fun, but yeah, uh, the point that I'm getting ready to try to make is, is it that men are just greedy because? You and I was having a lot of fun, like you said. We had a lot of sex. Like, we had a lot of sex. Yeah, we did. We did have... It was, the sex was perfect. So why would you feel the need to have sex with somebody else if if I was giving you all the sex that you needed? friends have kids and I told her all your friends live in the projects 
So I had a plan. Well, when I told her that, she stopped taking her birth control. That's how she ended up pregnant. And the day that I called you, I went to her doctor's appointment with her. I didn't know she was pregnant, but I went to her doctor's appointment with her. And I found out she was pregnant that day. And I walked from the doctor's appointment. I didn't even ride in the car back with her from the doctor's appointment. I was so pissed because I told her, I don't want kids. I grew up with kids. I raised kids. I raised kids when I was a kid. It's, it's so many kids in my family. I, I already knew what the scenario was with kids. So I, I wanted to put all that on hold until we had fully established ourselves, had our own land. She had a good state job. I was just going through my lawsuit with Nanny Capone, so I had a little bit of money. You know, plus I had some money from where I was hustling already. Plus I was working, but I had a little bit of money. But she just didn't want to listen to my plan, and she she went behind my back, stopped taking her birth control, and that just it, that just that really just fucked everything up. Because at that point, I decided that I didn't want to be with her. So did that come along during the time? Like, okay, because you're sick. You when, I called you when I left the doctor's office that day. I think we were already messing around, though. We were already messing around, but that's when I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and elevate this from just messing around to being together. So I have to take it back to another question because if you're saying that you had a plan and see, I'm just trying to get into the mind of a man right now only because do you see how you said you had a plan and you was planning on like establishing a foundation with this female. Meanwhile, you had already inserted a new female. So that plan was almost seeming like it was about to be messed up anyway. When you insert, when I inserted myself here, you see what I'm saying? Well, the other thing stop, I can... For you to stop taking your birth control behind my back and to end up pregnant, that's entrapment. Would, would you agree? I mean, I wouldn't agree because if you had said I don't want any kids and then see this is what a lot of men actually go through now where they say they don't want kids and then a woman comes up pregnant and then now they're having to take care of them. But technically, I almost think that they shouldn't have to take care of them if I already told you. But also, you have to be responsible in wrapping it up and keeping yourself protected. So it's kind of like, yeah, you said that, but you also did the opposite. You mean the very first time or? The very first time. How we ended up not being together. Yeah, because I ended up pregnant and you told me that you didn't want to have any kids and you wanted me to get an abortion. And I did and I was mad at you and then I didn't talk to you no more. Right. But that also, I was actually about to bring that up and that's funny because you must have been reading my mind. Because literally I was about to say, it was almost easy for us to kind of go back into a relationship because of how we broke it off because technically in my mind i always thought like i thought that was fucked up that that happened and i didn't need no kids anyway so i don't even know why i was so stupid but the fact that the matter is is that was the right decision i mean it was and it wasn't because then it kind of still fuck with me a little bit later on after the fact that i got that abortion and then we had two more kids after that because literally rj was planned or it was playing. So it was almost like now you was giving me back something that you took from me from the beginning. So in all actuality, I was I was trying to rectify this, the previous situation. Yeah, because you knew I was mad at that. Yeah, I knew you were mad. You, know, you, we, you didn't. We we just broke up. You just you just stopped talking to me. Yes, because that hurt my feelings. Like for one. I didn't even like you when I first met you. Like, and you know it yourself. Like, you was actually supposed to be dating my cousin. 
and not really actually dating her but when we all met it was kind of like everybody kind of gravitated to the person that they was trying to talk to and she kind of gravitated to you and i was stuck on the fact that you was from an area that i didn't know much about so i was saying like i'm not fooling with them because of this but after me and you got you know hanging out because you kind of you kind of did a little a little switch it a real <laughs> on everybody and they ended up getting me to go to the movies with you and so that's how you kind of switch the game up because and i didn't even know so i think she blamed me all these years for that incident but i didn't even know about that that was not my fault that was something that you did i didn't do that well how did it work Tima did it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was the one that said you didn't want to go to the movies and that's how and unless I don't know how where it went. All I, I know I is I had listen, I wasn't going to the movies with your cousin. I had no intentions on going to the movies with your cousin. They dropped me off on the block. I had a pocket full of crack. A book bag actually. Full of crack and weed. And they dropped me off on the block and told me they were going to the movies. And I was like, yeah, just take me, let me go grab my shit. Y'all go ahead and do what y'all do. And I'm going to stay out here and make some money. Lo and behold, 15 minutes later, Corey comes back and tell He like, they don't want him. They want you to come. So I ended up getting picked back up, going to the movies with you. Okay, well, I think they was trying to get me to go to the movies with Dion at the time, and I was like, um, I'm not going nowhere with Dion because I, I had I was trusting my intuition at the time, and Dion to me back then looked like he be doing women, and Dion it turned out to be a nice dude, <laughs> and that's I did say that, so I said I wasn't going nowhere with Dion. I, I'm not with it. He did, but Dion is so sweet. So I like that was, you know, I don't know if he beat on women or not, but at the time that's what I thought, and so I wasn't with it. Either way, so how me and you started was different, but after we got to spend time together, it was like okay, everything was. You treated me so nice always. Like that was one of the things I loved about you because you was always very catering, and and even though I was mean, so I I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was definitely mean to you but th you kept trying like you didn't stop you kept trying because I do what I wanted that's why well you ended up getting what you wanted and then then you kind of left me hanging and I used to think you was like so innocent because you was like little church boy and this that and the third and then you turned out not to be so you know you turned out to be one of them PKs like they be talking about y'all okay <laughs> So fast forward, okay, moving into um, young adulthood, because now we at the time where now we choosing. So I don't, I don't want to say this, but I want to say this only because you know I did this and you know I was able to do this. So um, when you called me at the time, I was um, living in Simon Circle and I was kind of not really in a good place as far as like what was happening i just didn't like certain things and i needed something that i knew you could give me so do you remember me saying i started calling you i wasn't calling you physically but do you remember me saying i started calling you spiritually yes were you offended by that because most people would say that's like Want. right so and i've always been that way when i want something i tell the universe and it comes and literally like from the time that i started calling you spiritually it took about two weeks and then you showed up and so one of the things was i was trying to give you some time because once i found out what you had going on i kind of like didn't want to feel like i manipulated the situation because some people would say that's a form of man manipulation when you put that nah, type of energy on it. No, nah, you didn't manipulate the situation. The situation was already fucked up. So that's one of them things. The thing I was seeking was seeking me. Yeah. Okay. So spiritually, I've always been a little 
what most people would say is weird. Um, but you knew that about me dating me. Did that ever bother you? No. What did you think? What'd you say? No, that didn't bother me. Did what did you think? I come I come from a spiritual family. So I never felt I never thought it was weird. Well, we both come from religious families. So spiritually, you know, we are a little different because it's been a couple times when I done told you stuff and you've never you never judge. You just basically was like, okay. And you would listen. Like when I would tell you stuff I didn't feel good about certain things, you would always listen. You never questioned. And it's been a couple of times where certain things actually happened wrong, you know, after I, I said, don't do this. And then later on, we find out something was really, really wrong and happening. Yeah, something was really fucked up. And, and if I had not listened, my ass would have been in jail. Right. So then the reason, only reason why I'm bringing that up is because that, that's like, you have to trust a person in order for you to kind of listen to their judgment or their gut basically right yes you do but at that point at that point in time i i trusted you wholly 100 percent. that was i didn't i had no reason to not trust you none at all exactly so that that's the only thing I, like i was just trying to get at that because going further going forward we're gonna get into some other messy shit and so <laughs> I was just trying to establish a boundary for, you know, where we come from, what we were to each other. And later on, what happened and then even getting so now. So that's the only reason why I was asking that question. Um, do you think I was impressionable back then? If you had to describe me as a person back then, what would you describe me as? No, I didn't think you were impressionable. I thought you, you, you always did your own thing. Follow, you didn't follow along behind with nobody else. You did your own thing, and that's what made us so compatible because that's the same way I am. I never, I was never a follower. I always did my own thing. I, actually, I I much rather go the opposite way than everybody else is going because I'm, I don't want to be identified with everybody else. And you were definitely that way. So I, I do think that is the reason why we were compatible because we would figure out what, what we wanted to do and that's, <laughs> and, and that's it. And that's what we did. So that was also one of the reasons why we had a lot of fun because, you know, you didn't care. Like, you would let me do anything. Like, okay, what do you want to do? Um, I figure it out and you'd be like, okay. So I definitely loved that part. Um, so what was the first thing? I mean, because I can't remember, like, the first thing that really triggered me when it came to you. It was like, it went from real, real good to real bad real quick. Um, I don't know because I had so much going on at that time. My life, my early, my early 20s up until about my mid, my mid 30s is really like a blur. And the only way I remember things is certain times people will bring up a situation and I'll think about it for a second. I'll be like, oh, shit, yeah, I remember that. And then it'll trigger on, like, a own set of memories, you know, from things that happened around that time. But I had so much shit going on. It, it, it really was like my life was a blur at that point. Some things I really can't remember. And, I, and I have, those memories have to be triggered. Okay, so we have had several cycles together is what I want to say anyway. Um, so you've known me at several different points of my life. Um, and I've known you at several different points in your life. I would say that being in a relationship with you early on was a lot different than it was after we started really like being adults. And when I say adults, I mean like having to do real like adult stuff. Right, and not and just the, not just the fun shit, but the, the real life shit. Right, so to me, I think our relationship changed after I had RJ. When I had RJ, it was different because now there's a baby involved, and maybe I wasn't as fun because I got to take care of a child. I mean, although we still had fun, we still did stuff, 
But then it was now, we can't just up and go to Philly whenever we feel like it. Or we just can't go to wherever it was we were trying to go because now we have a baby. So the question is, do you think kids change things or do you think that the people change after the kids come? <laughs> so you know, of course, Kia was my baby. Kia always been my baby. And Zaymer, he was just Zaymer, just Zaymer. Zaymer just happy, good luck. Zaymer was a good kid. Zimmer be so relaxed and laid back and he's still the exact same way now but when um that was when we first started talking but when we started on the second go around they weren't here so they was they lived in texas at the time with their dad they were in texas. yeah so when me and you started back the second time me and you was like kind of on go mode like a lot we kind of didn't sit still Yeah, because we was always, like, in them streets. And, I mean, that was because, like you said, there was a lot going on, and we kind of, you know... And it was just me and you, so it wasn't like we was with a group of people or none of that. It was me and you, and you was about, you know, handling your business and all that. So, that was one thing. But after RJ came, I felt like I am not allowed to have another kid without having my other kids... So I had to go get my other kids because I wasn't going to raise a child and not raise my other kids too. Like, I'm not that type of mom. So once I became pregnant with RJ, I felt like I had to go get my other kids as well. And so, and they wanted, they was ready to come back. So that was, you know, what it was. So when I came back, I remember because I had went to Texas for a little bit. And then by the time I came back, because remember I got an accident and I was pregnant. <laughs> a deer ran into my car on the way back. So that's the reason why I remember this. Um, and I had like um, tried to fix a tire and some other. But anyway, God saved it. So I didn't have to worry about it. But long story short, they came back and then we moved, we moved into Kentwood. So Kentwood was different only because... It was a mobile home, a trailer park, basically. And it was like, I had got a double wide. So I was buying a double wide at the time. And um, you had, you know, we was trying to make sure we did the right thing. But you still had your house. You had your um, trailer in Seaford. And then we had got the double wide in Dover. And, oh, no, hold on. Remember, we ended up having, we moved to the, we went to the hotel first because we didn't have a place to stay. When I got back from Texas, we went to the hotel. Do you remember that? Yes. And even that experience was, it was me, you, because you still went to Seaford to do whatever it was you was doing, but you always came back every night to make sure I was good. And how long did we stay in that hotel? Uh, about six months. Okay, so six months in a hotel. And Romir, I mean, um, RJ was, did, he wasn't born yet, was he? RJ was a baby. Okay, so I had had him, and I didn't want to stay with anybody. And that was funny because I had family there. I didn't want to stay with anybody, and you made sure that I still had, I don't know why I was so in love with hotels back then. Um, but you still made sure that I had everything and that, you know, stuff was going well, and I didn't even have a job. How did how did I get a, a a house with no job? I don't know, but we did it. Well, you gotta remember, I still had no because I didn't even I wasn't even on the house. No, it was just me. I got that by myself, and that's weird because how the hell did I get a house by myself and I didn't have a job? You finagle, you finagle some shit. <laughs> that is funny. 
Because I surely didn't have no job. I always had the money and you always had the means. And, and, and definitely. So, because, yeah, you made sure I was good, even though, like, that hotel situation, and it wasn't like we stayed in a bad hotel or anything. We no, stayed in a really we good hotel. No, nah, we didn't stay in no raggedy hotel. We stayed in, we stayed in nice hotels. Right, and one thing that I always loved about you was no matter what it was that I needed or wanted, you made sure I had it. Like, your ass was definitely in hustle mode back then when you was handling your business, making sure that we were good. Um, so I have no complaints about that. Um, it was after we moved to Kentwood. Okay, so I don't know how I got a house or none of that. So, yeah, that's still a blur. I, I can't remember. And back then I did a lot of um, drinking later on after the fact. So it could just be blocked out of my mind. I don't know. Um, but I don't recall having a job. Anyway, so we moved to Kentwood. And then that's when real life started. Because now it's kids, house, yeah, school, school stable meanwhile the thing that we used to do because everywhere you went i was always with you like laid in your lap like we spent a lot of time it was, together it was either you or the dog most of the time yeah, well dog. it might have been both of us because mecca mecca both used to be around yep so you know what? that's what my that's what my that's what my i remember i remember when my old heads he told me some shit at that point in time, he was like, yo, he said, you the only guy I know that do what you do. And I don't never see nobody with you but your girl and your dog. And he was trying to tell me, he was like, listen, ain't no wrong with getting money. I just want you to slow down a little bit. And he told me, he said, a slow drip still fills the bucket. And I was like, what you, what you mean by that? And he was like, you know how when you go and watch your car, you turn that hose on? And you spray that hose and you got soap flying all out of the bucket. He said, but if you turn that hose down some and just let the bucket fill up, none of the stuff, the stuff flies out. He said, that's what I mean by that. He said, just a slow drip still fill the bucket. And that's when I kind of sort of was like, okay, you ain't got to be king of New York. You just got to maintain. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how long you can make money. Well, one thing I do, I do know for a fact is that for a long time, and I can't remember how long it was up until things started going wrong, but you always made me feel like there was nobody else for you but me. When I got pregnant, it was weird because then it was different. And well, you, you went through, you went through about a postpartum depression with RJ, remember? Well, that was Romare. Was it Romare? Yeah, I that was Romare. I thought you, you, it was kind of, when you had, when you had RJ, you kind of went through. Oh, yeah, you are right. Yes, because they was trying to give me medication. You, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. I did. That's true, because that was when also Twin Towers went down at that time. Um, yeah. and, and I started working at the Department of Corrections after that. So yeah, that's that's true. But so that means that it triggered worse when it was Romir because literally I went through like hell. Um so that is true. I did go through per postpartum and no, it was RJ because then that's when I told you like it yeah, messed with my self esteem. Okay. It really started messing with my self esteem and I never had a self esteem problem and cuz I always knew I was like I was, you know, raised being like everybody would say oh she's so pretty she's so this so she's so that so i didn't have an issue but then i also feel like it triggered when the first time you cheated on me and i didn't understand why because at this point in time i was like so in love with you and then i'm sitting here like it broke my heart i'm not gonna lie because i was feeling like you know what I mean? I had a baby, and now am I not good enough? And it just triggered. And it's so crazy because when you're young, you don't know. You don't know that it don't have nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with you. Nothing at all. In, in, in the beginning, it had nothing to do with you. Because you went through a period 
where you didn't want me to touch you. I, we didn't have sex. We didn't. It was just. It was a weird. It was a weird period, and I'm. You have to also go back to how I was raised. So how I was raised played the large part in a lot of the things that I did in my younger years. Because I was raised watching my uncles, my dad, um, all the men around me. They all took care of they. They all took care of their homes, but I was also told. If a man take care of home, then he can do what he want. And that's what I saw. And that's what I'm, that's what I mimic what I saw. Right. So it was me cheating was not about you. Not in the beginning. It wasn't about you. It was just, it was about me exploring my manhood and me growing up and me being a hustler and the access that I had. Right. Because I had access to a lot of things. I was privy to a lot of things that a lot of people weren't privy to because of the people that I dealt with. And see, to me, I took it to heart because I felt like, okay, maybe I'm not good enough. But then it also went into something else where it was like everything I just did for you or with you. And then all of a sudden, it felt like to me, like when it was a certain type of status obtained, then you didn't care about me. And I, you never said that. That's the thing. But that's just the way I felt. Well, when you found out that I cheated on you, that was that was the that was the time, that was the first time you found out that I cheated on you. I had I had cheated on you numerous times before, but you never found out. And and that's just you know you gotta understand the period. It's, right. We was, we was, man, we was everywhere. I get when it. I say everywhere, when I say everywhere, we was everywhere. But the other funny part about that is, how long, even when me and you started dating, before that, I told you, you never had to cover that up. You could have just told me. And well, I, thought I, did, I thought I didn't know how to tell you. Okay, well, that's a thing. That's a, that's definitely a thing. But to me, it felt like if you don't tell me the truth, then you're helping or you're you're against me. That's you and them against me. You were giving people things that they could use against me later, and I would rather find out from you. And in your defense, you actually did one time come to me and tell me that you had messed with somebody that was supposedly my friend, and you told me and she didn't tell me. So... What made that situation different than the last one? Like, was it because of, because there, there was a time period between there. So was it then I made you more comfortable in telling me or was it because I'm trying to figure out, like, that was one of the things that you and I talked about from the beginning. You never have to lie to me about if you're trying to do something outside of our relationship or any of that. Did you think I was lying? Maybe. <laughs> Listen, man, you know what? People say they want to know the truth. People don't really want to know the truth. Most people. Most people can't handle the truth. But you know me, so you know I could. I didn't know then. I didn't know then. You never tried. No, you're right. I never tried. But that's what you got to take it back to me being, you know. I was always, listen, man. Being a preacher's kid is a little bit different than anything else. Because everything you do is, is you got to sneak and do it. And I got real good at sneaking. I got real good. And that's the other thing. Can I go back to are men just greedy? Because again, you saying, okay, I cheated on you numerous times before that. But when and how? Only because this is the thing. Me and you were together 24-7. I did laugh because one time you told me, you said, I don't know why it is. Every time I'm about to cheat on you, you call me and then you fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, it was a few times you did that. So you did say that times. to me, but... Yeah, it was, it was a few times that happened. Well, I thought that was funny because it was like, you just, you said, it's like you just know. <laughs> yeah, 
just Woman's intuition. This nigga doing something, he ain't got no business. <laughs> You too quiet. It's like a kid. You know when uh, normally you call all day long. <laughs> now all of a sudden, um, hold on. It's been an hour, no phone call. You too quiet. Let me call him. See what he's doing. <laughs> and, and most of the time, I was somewhere high uh, and making money. It wasn't that I was doing nothing because in the beginning, I I didn't. I may have cheated on you a couple times because. When I stop, when I stop talking to my oldest son's mom, when I decided that I wouldn't fuck with her no more, I didn't fuck with her no more. Like, I would go back to the house, and and sometimes we did sleep in the same bed. A lot of times I just slept on the couch, but I would get in the bed, and I still wouldn't mess with her. She would try, but I still wouldn't mess with her. I mean, I could believe that when you came here, you would sleep in my bed. We, I didn't try to mess with you, and you didn't try to mess with me, but you would always sleep in my bed. You know, that was normal to me anyway, because then I wake up, you in my bed, my kids in date, then the boys then came in the bed, and I got a bed full of people. Yeah. So it was like, no, that's like normal. And then it was, it was time when I went to sleep, and I woke up. I'm like, where's she, where's she come from? You wasn't in the bed when I went, when I laid down and went to sleep. In my bed? It's my bed. <laughs> Where you think I'm going to go to sleep at? I don't know. Yeah, like, what do you always felt like? I don't know why, because even the first time you did that, I'm like, he just comes here and he just gets in my bed. Like, that's where he's supposed to be sleep at. You're supposed to sleep in your son's room. <laughs> I do. I use your shower. I use your. Oh, I might. Exactly. But some people would think that was weird, though, don't you think? Because, but our family never looked at us like we was weird. Because our family would be right here too, and they just was like, okay, nobody ever said anything. I think everybody, I think everybody always looked at it like we would always be together. Like, well, at that time we wasn't together, and it was just more or less like, again, I think it was just normal because, and we didn't do anything. Like I said, it was just. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, but in all the times and opportunity that we had to mess around, we still didn't mess around. Right. And we would have a house full of people. I think one time I counted how many people we had in this house. Almost like twenty. Yeah, it was about twenty people. And no matter where everybody slept at, for some reason, me and you always slept in the same spot. Yeah. So, I think it was just normal, but it wasn't like we didn't like. And so some people would think that was weird, but. It just seemed fine to me. I didn't care. Um, and like I said, the kids didn't care either because they would come after the fact and find their way. And as big as they are, they would come lay down with us too. So I think it was just like a bonding moment or something maybe. I don't know. But anyway, back to the whole issue. When a woman tells a man, you don't have to lie to me. You can tell me like if you want to do something outside of our relationship or you know just tell me give me a heads up or if you did something come to me and you be honest with me what do they hear men speaking for men women are deceptive <laughs> damn women are deceptive and most women if they say that shit they don't mean that shit they don't say that shit don't fucking don't really mean that it sounds good but they don't really mean that but what if they do that y'all it's not like y'all are giving it's like that's just a thought because literally when you told me that i didn't treat you no different when you came to me and told me that you slept with my friend one of my friends i didn't treat you any different i didn't go out and do nothing wrong i and i still kept talking to her because like i said if i was talking to you i was gonna talk to her too i think she felt some type of way about it in the end but yeah well, she, she, she tried to make that happen a few times after that i still I was like, nah. I don't even really remember. I don't even remember the. I don't even really remember the situation, the altercation. You know how it went. I remember how it went down, but that's all I remember. Well, it didn't matter. What mattered to me was you came to me and you told me, and like I told you, I said I don't want to be walking around people and 
my man done done something yeah don't do that to me like to me that's the worst part of the whole entire thing like if i'm with you you protect me and i get yeah you messed up but we all human and sometimes we make mistakes but don't leave me out in the cold like and that's one of the things where that's one of the things that i had an issue with you with because that made me feel like with all the other people that was kind of what you did and then like you know a couple of times because we used to you know play maryland big time back in the day and it used to make me feel like okay when we go to maryland like i don't know who you out here messing with and now you got me looking stupid and that's messed up because why would you do that to somebody that you said you love? I understand. And then after it started happening too much, then it started making me feel like this dude don't care. So I'm about to teach him a lesson. And that's when everything went downhill. No, see what I'm saying? It was already going downhill. But it, it's never going, It's not. It, it hasn't went downhill until y'all feel it. And that's the thing with men. It don't go downhill until y'all now feel it. Like, the whole time we rolling down this hill, as long as it's just my feelings and my emotions getting messed up, it's okay. That's not cool. Because one thing that you can say, and I know you can say this for a fact, I'm very verbal when it comes to my feelings and my emotions. And you were told numerous amounts of times. Please don't do this because this is what's going to happen to you and in. And before, I ain't going to lie, I used to have like a major hand problem. So there was there was more more problems than one. <laughs> yeah, you, you had uh, you did have a problem with your hands. We don't condone violence, but sometimes you got to catch these hands. And it, it was a couple times you had to catch these hands because you was playing in my face. But for some reason, it was almost like you just could not control yourself, and I didn't get it. Well, it just, it, like I said, it, it, go, it goes back to, you know, what I was taught, and how I was raised, and what I saw. And so do you now think differently about that? I would change. I would change my mindset, because now I, I know that, you know, all the shit that I was taught, all the shit that I seen, it wasn't right. It, it wasn't right. And I think sometimes we have to go through stuff, even if it's like bad, in order for us to learn who we are. So I feel like I wouldn't change a thing. Everything had to happen the way it had to happen. It had to happen. As, as much pain that I felt, you know, from the situation that happened, because it was a long time. And I, and I didn't know what depression was. I didn't know what depression was. Right. So what happened in in the process that made you understand? Okay, well I'm kind of going through something. I feel depressed or stressed out or whatever. How did you get past that? And sometimes, I mean, you had a conversation yesterday and I had to, what was it, yesterday? No, day before yesterday. And um, you told me that I went too far in a situation and I said, you can't tell me how to react to a situation after you did something to me. And sometimes we think that people should react a certain type of way. Okay, well, I only did this or I only did that. But we can't control what other people do. We can't control their reaction to the way they wronged us. And so also, and I can take accountability for everything that I did during that time. But the part that I keep trying to explain and the part that me and you keep like kind of button heads at is it's almost like for men, it's okay for them to do whatever they want to do, how many times they want to do it in any type of form or fashion, disrespectful or whatever. And 
it'd be okay. But the minute, the very first minute that y'all get exactly back what you gave, somehow now y'all stressed out and depressed. How? Because I don't get that part. You know what I think? It, it goes back to, it, that goes, that question goes back to something that I still feel, that I still hold true. I don't think that we as men, we, us as black men, I'm going to say black men, because I'm, I'm not speaking about white men. You already know how I feel about this. But I don't think that men are really, we, we are animals, right? We, we, are, we are one of the animals on this planet. There are very few animals that have one mate. Very few. So, I don't think there's any way possible that you can get everything that you need from one person. But I believe that not to be true, though. Because initially, when me and you first started dating, there was nothing that nobody could say to me that wouldn't make me think that you was my everything, my all, end all to end all. So I feel differently because when I'm with somebody, as long as I don't feel violated in a situation, I'm not even going to look at nobody else. So I can see it a little bit different. I could be okay with one person. Yeah, but you shouldn't do it. I still don't think that that's the way the world... I don't think... Because if you look at our ancestors, look at where we come from. It was... It was they had multiple wives and multiple women. And everybody was happy. Well, we can't say everybody was happy. Because we don't know that for a fact. But they made it work. Whether they was unhappy or not, they made it work. I mean... Well, I can honestly say I would actually be in a relationship with multiple wives, but it has to be honest. That's my thing. Like, for me, as long as the, the truth is there, I don't care about the rest of that stuff. And see, that might be like part of my upbringing because I said before, like my mom let my dad come stay at our house with his girlfriend. I don't think there was any sex or anything. I, I don't know, cause you know, I but I don't think so. Um, excuse me, but I learned how the family dynamic works when there's multiple people and parents around. So to me, I think that's beautiful. But the thing that I don't condone is. If I'm your wife and you want another one, you just go get one, but you know, behind my back, or you just go get a girlfriend, you know, behind my back. If you approach me like a grown person and we have a grown adult conversation stating, this is how we're going to be able to grow. This is how we're going to be able to build. This is how we're going to do it. whatever it is that we doing. I can accept that. What I don't want to accept is you doing something behind my back that leads us all in a messed up way. Because one thing I can say about you, and then I was getting ready to bring this point up too, because when you were saying a girl ended up pregnant, me and you were having sex raw. Me and you had nine times out of ten, even during the times when I found out later on that you were cheating, we always had unprotected sex. It wasn't until later on when stuff started to change. And, you know what I'm saying, things started being thrown off. But one thing I can say, God, you know, praise God, that we ain't never have no STD situation or none of that. So you was always very careful with that. So I can't never say that you did that. But why do dudes feel comfortable in having unprotect unprotected sex with one, a female that's not their girlfriend, a female that's not their wife, and multiple females at the same time? That's not cool. That's not cool. Stop. You're fucking up the pH. You're fucking up. You might not be burning them, but you Fucking, fucking the pH up, man. Yeah, that's a thing. And because that happened. I knew that because I grew up with a house full of women. So, but you still yeah, did I it did. then. I did it, but I ain't never gonna fuck one and, and then go right fuck the other. I ain't, that's one thing I ain't do. And I, I, I did, I did some cheating, but I ain't had some standards. I did, I had some laws that I wouldn't cross. Right. So, now, 
okay, let's use your relationship right now. And I'm only saying it because now you're in it. What do you know now differently than you did then? Or is it nothing? Because since it's still complicated, then it seems like there's still something, you know, whatever. But I, I just, as of now, we are full grown adults. You know my status. You know what I just went through. You know, like, as certain, some things was going on, because I would call you and tell you. Um, and people lie, you know, people do whatever they want to do. Um, and you can't control what they do. You just have to, to control your actions or your reaction to them. But to me, I married that person and I wanted to be in that relationship because if I chose to be married, I didn't want to be married again. But people go into relationships for... I don't, I don't want to use the word agenda or their own agenda or I don't really want to use that word because it seems like that's a, a negative. But people do have their own agenda when they go into relationships, right? Yeah, so, that's, that, that's the equivalent of saying people have their own perspectives. Yes. So how do now you get on the same accord or the same page with a person because I could have swore I was on the same page with that person, but then I realized as we was going along, we might have been on the same number, but we was in two different books. So it's like now I am paying attention to how people just, you know, kind of manipulate their way into relationships. But why are you going to manipulate your way into a relationship just to have some messed up situation? That don't make sense to me. Do you get what I mean? So are, are people just not honest in what they want? Is that the issue? Largely. Largely. You know what? Sometimes people, you, you might not even know what you want going into a situation. And you, you still might not be able to figure out what you want, you know, in the situation or after the situation. So does that mean that you shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody? I do, because you get ready to mess up somebody else's life. If you love them and they don't love you, now they messed up your life. And they knew they wasn't going to love you from the beginning. They didn't want that. That's what I'm saying. So if a person, if you dating a person, or you trying to just be out here and be, you know, free and flighty, just say that. I don't want a relationship. I'm just trying to be out here doing this, that, or the third. That's honest. Wouldn't you rather a person tell you that rather than trying to get your hopes and dreams up and now you in a bad situation or a bad way loving on somebody that don't love on you? So, at this point, relationship-wise, how old are you? 48. At 48 years old, you are in a complicated relationship. Um, why? Elaborate. I just think I won't be alone. I just want to be by myself. I just want to dance myself alone. I mean, I totally understand that because that's where I'm at with it too. And it's not that I want to be alone. It's just that at this point, adding people to your life brings... I got to do this for you. I got to do that for you. And I don't mind. Like, for the right person, I would not mind. But at this point, until I figure out who the right person is or what the right person is or just that portion, I want to find myself. I want to know what it is that I like, what it is that I don't like. I've never been just solely on my own. And right now, I get to be solely on my own. Our last son is... Turn, then, then turned 18 soon he'll be out of the house and I'll be left to figure out what I am after that if I add somebody before that time is up then it's going to be and it's not that I don't want to be with nobody else I, I do want to be with somebody but I want to be I want to be I want it to be right like after everything I just went through that whole I've been by myself for two years 
but now I'll be by myself all the way completely, like no kid, no nothing. And I don't know what that looks like. And I keep Huh? You've never experienced that. No. And I wanna experience that. And I keep hearing people saying you have to compromise and you have to why? That's another thing. I don't want to compromise. Why do I have to compromise? There's somebody out in this world that wants and likes the same things that I like. Why do I have to compromise with a person that don't want or don't like the same thing that I want? You see what I'm saying? So there's somebody in the world that likes exactly what you like. Why do you have to compromise yourself just because you want to be with somebody to take on an energy that is not what you want? You see what I'm saying? I totally see what you're saying. Man, I, I don't, I don't, I know, I know I'm a hard motherfucker to deal with. I already know that. You know that. I know that. I never thought you was actually hard to deal with. You know that? You never thought that? No. Because we just worked. It didn't start becoming hard until just some of the things that you were doing just didn't add up to me. But initially, I never found it hard to deal with you. We had a good time. We liked the same things. We ate the same foods. We listened to the same music. Like, even though you listen to a lot more reggae than I would intend to listen to, it always just gave me good vibes. You're a very neat individual. I didn't like doing laundry. You would do laundry. I could do all the rest of the stuff. So it was almost like the things that I didn't like in life, you did. So it was like we kind of worked. Yeah, we had a good system set. Yes, and it didn't feel like nobody was compromising nothing. You didn't want me to wash because you had a lot of expensive ass clothes that you wanted to make sure that you kept good. So that meant you would wash my stuff. You didn't really like the, doing the cooking, but you would cook here and there. I don't mind cooking. I like cooking. And I never have really had to pick up behind you. Like here and there, you'd be a little bit forgetful or whatever. You wasn't lazy. I think really my biggest issue that I had with you was that you just lie a lot and you just cheated a lot. I didn't like those things. If it was not for that, we could have been together forever. But you had a problem with just, and I have a problem with a nigga that got a problem with you that don't put me first. Yeah, it was quite a few of them. Yeah, I, I didn't appreciate it. But other than that, really, honestly, yeah, I would not have thought that the way things were initially from the beginning, you seemed like you would have been my perfect match because of everything that I wasn't or didn't want to, and you understood me, and you treated me like, and that's the other thing. I can't ever really ever say you did me dirty till later. Like, when you was really, like, on your stuff, you're very given to me. I mean, there's like above and beyond. You probably is in the top, like, and when I, when I say like two dudes that basically I would know that y'all just would give me the world, you and Charles basically were the two. Cause he went above and beyond to make sure that I had. You went above and beyond to make sure I had. Dudes don't like that? Hell no. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with that voice? <laughs> well, she did the initial the initial thing. She caught your attention with the way she smelled. That was good. <laughs> the voice didn't match. Well, see what I'm saying? That's something that you wouldn't like in a female. These are the things. This is why I keep saying people got to know what they want. And then stop playing with people that ain't what you want. Yeah, when I, when I first met you, you checked all the boxes. 
I mean, I do a lot of stuff. That That's one of the things I know about me, can't nobody say I don't go above and beyond for my person because I do. I go further than that. Certain things just got to be right. And sometimes when you're choosing like the, the wrong people and it just don't be right. And when you're out of alignment with a person, it's just not going to be right, okay? And God be telling us when we're out of alignment and sometimes we just don't listen. Yes, and we keep going and going and going and going and going and then wonder why it don't work out. You 15, 16 years later in and then you wonder why it don't work out. You wasn't supposed to be there this whole entire time. You've been wasting your damn time. So then what you do? Because you can't get them years back. You know that, right? No, you can't get them back. And that's why I'm saying I'm not going to waste no more of my years doing what people call compromising. I'm not doing that. Right now, I got to go figure out what I want in life. And that's whether or not it's on travel vibes. And whether or not it's on experiencing different types of love and, you know, life or whatever it is. That's what I want to do. And I don't want no judgment in the process with people and everything else. I mean, I don't care. But at the end of the day, it's just, I just don't. I definitely feel you on So right now, what you, as a man, what's your biggest issue with females right now? Why? Wouldn't that's the time when they want to now run the streets and cheat and do all the stuff back? <laughs> Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I don't know about that because I would prefer my dude to be in with me. Like, because I like to spend a lot of time with a dude. My money in the head when I talk now. Them bitches know it's over with, they in my pants.